Sound travels far and wide here in Kentucky, where music fills our hearts with homegrown happiness and the rhythms of country life. I'm Arthur Hancock, here today at the Bluegrass Hall of Fame Museum in Owensboro, Kentucky, with John Conley, a country music legend. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. What was it like growing up on a real farm and a real working environment in the state of Kentucky? I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was a lot of work. You name a thing, we tried it on the farm, as was the case in, with family farms in, in that era of the 50s and 60s. Of course, tobacco was the cash crop in those days. Tell us, how did you come to play country music? Fell in love with country music, riding around uh, with my dad uh, and listening to the Grand Ole Opry and country music. In the stripping room while we were uh, doing uh, tobacco, they were playing country music. There was nothing else on the radio but country. And you didn't come to music as a full-time career immediately, right? No, not, a, not at all. I, I moved to Nashville only because I got a job at a radio station WLAC in 1971. Had I ended up in another radio station in some other city, the music would have just remained a hobby. Can you tell me about the period of time when you wrote and performed and released Rose Colored Glasses, what that was like? Rose Colored Glasses was my fourth release on uh, what was then ABC Records. And uh, it would have been our last, I'm sure, if you don't make it in four, four singles in, the, in that day, they would have released me. When we been there. It did make it. It broke in Houston, Texas. Stayed on the charts for 25, 26 weeks. I wrote it in 1976, within about six weeks of Backside of 30, which is another of my singles. The Urban Cowboy movie came out shortly after, uh, or just about the same time that I broke with, with uh, my first hits. And that started a whole new wave of popularity for country music that had not been present up until that point. The next time that happened, as far as I'm concerned, was when Garth came along. And all of a sudden, uh, country music artists are filling stadiums, and they're still doing it, even with the new country. I do believe that uh, one of the reasons that bluegrass has gained in so much in popularity in these today's time is because bluegrass sounds more country than country sounds on the radio. I agree with you. Yeah. I think that's true. How has Kentucky influenced your career? I've been a member of the Grand Ole Opry now 38 years this year. But I'm so fortunate to have been able to share those boards with great people from Kentucky like Bill Monroe, uh, Grandpa Jones. Kentucky has produced so many greats and we're still doing it. Kentucky is still uh, producing a lot of the new people that are coming on the scene and uh, that's exciting. You know, one of the neat things about doing live shows now is there are people younger than you even, sometimes in the crowd, who weren't born when these things came out. and But they're still singing along, which, uh, you know, somehow or other they got exposed to it, I guess from their parents or grandparents or whatever. But no matter how they got there, it, what I love about it is it, it underlines the fact that great songs stand up over time and over generations. Country works because it speaks to everyday, ordinary Americans. It's been an honor to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you for everything, and I look forward to hearing you this evening. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Appreciate it.